very quickly, just at the outset, I wanted to thank everybody who's been commenting and uh, subscribing. Very much appreciate it. And we're going to talk a little bit about uh, AI again. I know, but it's so ubiquitous these days and so much is happening, it's hard to keep up. OpenAI just uh, announced its uh, chat GPT 4.0, as in Omni, which is a large multimodal model, which I would submit is more evolutionary than revolutionary. Despite so many people uh, alluding to the fact that it's similar to the artificial intelligence in the Spike Jones movie, Her, which it's kind of really not, but I, I, I get the analogy. So we have had large language models, or LLMs, for a while now. And this new breed of AI is uh, demonstrated by Google's Gemini from a few months ago. And more recently, OpenAI's GPT-4.0. So ChatGPT, I really love that you, you know, taught the value of math to my friend Mark. And I wrote uh, one last thing I'd love if you could take a look at. Of course. I'd love to see what you wrote. Show it to me whenever you're ready. Okay, so this is what I wrote down. What do you see? Aw, I see. I love ChatGPT. That's so sweet of you. So these two are examples of large multimodal models, or LMMs. The two types of models are quite different, but build on each other. Uh, LLMs are transformer-based models which are trained in vast amounts of text data, and they excel at natural language processing tasks like text generation, summarization, translation, question answering, that sort of thing. But they're limited to processing textual data and can't really understand images and stuff like that. LMMs, on the other hand, large multimodal models, are designed to process and integrate multiple data sources, text, images, audio, video, and potentially other data types like sensors and things. So they can, they have a, a broader input and can in some ways make a broader output. The example of that OpenAI gave at its presentation was quite interesting. Um, the interaction was quick. It was, uh, appeared to be human-like. Although, honestly, I find the sort of bubbly personality of the, the chatbot kind of annoying. I mean, I know what they were going for. They were wanted to make it seem more human and so on, but it, it just, I think 10 minutes of that would be a bit much. But anyway, it was pretty remarkable as the interaction is faster. It's more like real time talking and getting a response from somebody. And it is a step forward for sure. I don't think either of these, as far as I understand it, neither of these types of AI have any kind of internal model of the real world that they can directly sort of query or reason from. I mean, they're, tra they're trained in vast amounts of data, but they don't have any sort of structured symbolic representation of the world built into them. So they're not smart in that sense. They're still processing data and spitting out answers. They're not really, you know, like a general AI would be, artificial general intelligence, where it's just smart on its own. So I think we're, we're definitely making, uh, making progress. I'd, I'd like to see, I mean, I understand Apple is in talks with OpenAI to possibly incorporate this into Siri or something like this to work on device with iPhones and presumably tablets and Max. So that would certainly be interesting and it's a step forward, but I don't think these are quite what they're purporting to be. It's not Jarvis, it's not her, it's not any of those things yet. But unless something major blows up in the next few months or years as far as the progress of AI, I think we will get there at some point to some kind of general AI where it's actually intelligent. I don't know if it'll be conscious, but it'll be intelligent, and who knows what will, what will happen from there. Anyway, my feeling is that these uh, large multimodal models are more evolutionary than revolutionary, but, you know, I may be talking out of my butt, so let me know what you think in the comments if you care to 
do so, and uh, we'll catch you next time.